Let's talk about CPU count. That's the init.ora parameter if you're a dinosaur like me, or the SP file parameter if you're a more modern DBA. The question is, why is it set to what it is and should I be setting it myself? Now to answer the why, you might, for example, see that the number of physical cores on your box is only, say, 16, yet CPU count might come out as 32. To understand why that might be the case, check the previous video I've done on sockets, cores, and CPUs. Um, I'll put a link up there or in the description below so you can click on that video and understand what we mean by CPU in the Oracle instance. Now, the question is, should I be setting CPU count? Well, for most people, you don't want to be doing this because if you don't set it to its default value, for example, let's say you set it to something lower than the default, you might inadvertently be actually throttling the amount of power your server can do. We have a thing what's known as instance caging. I'll put a white paper link in the description below as well about a whole white paper on the concept of instance caging. But in a nutshell, what instance caging lets you do is throttle the amount of database work or throttle the amount of work a database can do based on the amount of CPU resources made available to it. So let's say my CPU count defaults to 32. If I set it to say 24 and I have a resource manager plan enabled, which by default is normally on, what that means is that under load, the database will only try to endeavor to use 24 of the available 32 threads of CPU work available in effectively only 75% of the server resources. Now, why would I want to do that? Why would I want to slow my database down? Well, it becomes very useful if I've got multiple database instances on a single server. I might want to carve up the available CPU resources to make sure that particular databases can't consume all of the available server firepower. In that way, I could have two databases, each one being given a CPU count of, say, half the total number of CPUs to make sure that each one isn't going to exceed the available resources of a given server. There are lots of things you can do with instance caging, but it comes back to our previous point. By default, you probably don't want to be messing with the CPU count parameter unless you explicitly want to activate instance caging.